the whole world is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. The whole world is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Because as a child of God, you no more operate under the natural realm. You operate on the supernatural realm. Hallelujah. And that's why it's worth speaking in Ephesians 2 verse 21. He said he has raised up together to sit down with him in heavenly places. You are not supposed to be found in the low places of life. Because you are a redeemed child of God. You are not supposed to be found in the low place of life because we are, you are a child of God. Hallelujah. And then in week two, we also saw the world dimension of it. He said you cannot operate in the world without the world. And his word speaking in John chapter 1, verse 1 to 2. He said in the beginning was the world and the world was with God. I like verse 3 of it. He said without him is, not, cannot, is anything made that is made. So without the word of God, you cannot operate in the supernatural. Hallelujah. And we also saw the Holy Ghost dimension of it. The Holy Ghost dimension of it. And we saw what happened in Acts chapter 2 verse 1. He said, as soon as the Holy Ghost came upon them, Peter, that what a lily livered man, started operating in the supernatural. So without the Holy Ghost, you cannot operate in the supernatural. Hallelujah. We also saw the faith dimension of it. We have had the faith dimension of it. And it's worth speaking in Habakkuk 2 4. He said, The righteous shall live by faith. The righteous shall live by faith. And he said, Without faith, it is impossible to please God until you are wrapped up in faith. You are not qualified to put it into supernatural. So, born again is not a, a license. But you must operate in faith to operate in the supernatural. Hallelujah. And last week, we look at the name dimension. The name of Jesus Christ. And he said the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and safety is guaranteed. And that's why he's well speaking in Philippians 2 from 9 to 10. He said he has given him a name that is above every other name. He said by the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord. And so, until you put that name to use, you cannot operate in the supernatural. The name of Jesus is your access to operate in the supernatural. Anywhere the name of Jesus appears, even attention responds instantly. Hallelujah. And today, we shall be focusing on the praise dimension of it. Today, we shall be operating on the praise dimension of it. Hallelujah. Dr. Miles Moro speaking, he said, when purpose is not known, abuse becomes inevitable. When purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. Why must I praise God? Why am I supposed to pray God? I have not built that house. I have not bought that car. I'm still single. For the past four years, I've been waiting for that man to comfort. For nine years now, I've been unemployed. I am a wanderer. I am a vagabond. But then, it's worth speaking in Psalm 50. He said, let everything that has bread praise the Lord. You might, not want, you might not be where you want to be, but you cannot live the life you live in January again. Is somebody getting me? You cannot live the life you live in January this year again. January 2017 has come and gone. It will never come back again. And that's why you need to praise God. That you are not in the mortuary, but you are in the sanctuary. It's enough reason for you to praise God. That you are not in the hospital, you are in the church. It's enough reason to pray God. That you are not in the ATM. You are not in the prison. It's enough reason for you to praise God. That you don't have money, but you don't need money to buy bread. It's enough reason to pray God. The beauty of a man is in his bread. Take away the, beauty, the bread from a man. A man comes to zero point. Take a bread from a man. It becomes zero point. Hallelujah. One day God snatched the bread from Yaradua. It became a zero point. Nobody in Nigeria talked about Yaradua again. Why? The bread of life have been taken from him. And here you are. Qualified to have that bread of life. Lift your hands and begin to thank him again. Say, Lord, I exalt you. I give you glory. I magnify your name. I thank you. Lord, I thank you that I am in the land of the living. 
Hallelujah. That's why I love brother Ezekiah. Ezekiah speaking in Isaiah 18. Isaiah 38 from 18 to 19. Studio Isaiah 18. He said, will the great praise thee? Will the great praise thee? Isaiah 38, 18. He said, will the great praise thee? Studio please. Isaiah 38, 18. He said, for the grave cannot praise thee. Death cannot celebrate thee. The, praise, the, grave, the grave cannot praise him. Isaiah's testimony was anchored on this praise. Isaiah has a heart of praise. He said, God, I am alive. I am not complaining. I give every glory to you. Every day of my life, I thank you. Lord, if I go to the grave, will the grave praise you? If I go to the grave, will the grave praise you? And here you are in the land of the living as if you are in the graveyard. Here you are in the land of the living as if you are in a graveyard. Every hour, every second of your life is an embodiment of complaint. You are like the important man in that John chapter 5. When even Jesus came to him, he was still complaining. I have nobody. I have nobody. He saw the master himself. But he was engrossed with his complaining that he did not know that it was even Jesus. He said, Lord, I have, okay, I have nobody to help me. My cousin have refused to help me. In short, this nation is against me. Nigeria is against me. I wish I am from America. And let me tell you, even in America, there is ghetto. There is ghetto in America. Hmm. There are people that work in the mansion in America. Some of our brothers that have refused to come back, there are taxi drivers there. They don't have transport to come back. You should thank God that you have transport to pay to my train. Thank God that you can even walk from to my train and come back. It is enough for you to say, God, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Give him glory. He said, will, will death celebrate you? Then in, 19 of, in the 18th of 19 of it, he said, let everything have bread. It's only the living that can praise God. It is only the living that can praise God. That makes praise mandatory for the living. That makes praise mandatory for the living. God has created man to showcase his praise. You are an embodiment of praise. God packaged you to be a praise. He did not package you to be a mockery, a complainer. And that's why every redeemed child of God must always lift God and say, God, I thank you. That is the secret of this great commission. About two Sundays ago, the senior pastor was sharing a testimony about Bishop. He said, that an evil wind came to the air. An evil wind came to the air. And people were crying, people were complaining. He said, sit down. I don't see any force that can drop the, 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 the craft and fly in. No force. Because praise was there. Hallelujah. Because God dwells in praise. Praise is God dwelling place. And that's why it's worth speaking in Psalm 22 verse 3. He said, God, God abit the praise of his people. Praise is God's atmosphere. Everywhere there is praise, abundance happen. Everywhere there is praise, joy happen. If you want to see where signs and wonders are happening, then praise is in place. And that's why look at Zechariah 12, 14, 17, studio. Zechariah 14, 17. An environment that there is no praise is subject to dryness. And it shall be that whosoever will not come up to the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship their king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall I, there shall be no rain. And so, every environment where there is no praise, there is close heaven. Praiselessness is what that triggers dryness in life. When your life is not embodiment of praise, then you live in stagnation. He said, if the whole family of the world, if the whole family will not come to Jerusalem to praise God, then I will give them no rain. And what does rain do? Rain is a fertilizer. Rain is a refresher. Rain simulates growth. In my place now, there is harvest everywhere. Now, because the fruits are fertile. Now, if they give you plantain, you seek solid plantain now. Why? The rain has come. 
There's fish in abundance now. Why the rain has come? Lift your hand and say, Lord, I will wear the garment of praise from this day. I will wear the garment of praise from this day. And now, the word of God speaking, say, God, one, how do praise provokes us to walk in the supernatural? How does praise provoke us to walk in the supernatural? He said, praise unleash wondrous acts. Praise unleash wondrous acts. Praise unleash wondrous acts. Anywhere praises, signs and wonders are bound to happen. Anywhere praises, signs and wonders are bound to happen. Pray provokes the supernatural because when you praise, God comes down. Praise cannot be rejected, but prayer can be rejected. Because his word speaking in James 4 3, he said, You pray and ask not because you pray and have not because you ask and miss. So you can pray and miss, but you cannot praise and mix. Anytime you praise, God comes down. And we saw that in Joshua 6, from 21 to 22. Our praise unleashed wonders. The wall of Jericho, by description, there is no wall that has been fortified like the wall of Jericho. The Jericho was an expressway. They say oxen ride upon the Jericho fence. Jericho fence was a dual carriage road. It was a barrier. I don't know what present both of Jericho in your life, but as you stand up today to praise God, I see that wall coming down in the name of Jesus. And God said, just march around the city for six days. And on the seventh day, blow the trumpets. Blow the trumpets. That as soon as you blow the trumpets, the wall of Jericho will come down. You know why? Anytime you praise, God comes down. And when God comes down, everything bow. He said, the earth is his footstool. The heaven is his throne. The earth is his footstool. So anytime you praise God, anytime you give me praise, God comes down. And what God comes down, why will the wall of Jericho not collapse? The almighty God, the omnipotent God, the creator of everything comes down because God lives in praise. Praise is God's food. Anytime you engage him in praise, God comes down. Hallelujah. Somebody lift your hand and say, I will praise him. The rest of my life, I will praise him. I will praise him. I will give him glory. I will lift my voice and shout hallelujah. His word speaking in John. You can see that in John again. The first time our God did wondrous acts through praise. He said God unleashed wonders through praise. We saw that in Jonah chapter 2 verse 9 to 10. Jonah has been praying. Inside the fish, Jonah has been praying. Jonah has been praying. But one day, Jonah just changed gear. And Jonah said, Lord, I will sacrifice with the voice of thanksgiving. And I will pay my vows. Go to 10. And immediately, I didn't know that fish can hear the voice of man. I never believed that fish can hear. The voice. When God speaks everything here, when God speaks everything here, and say immediately the Lord spoke unto the fish. And the fish vomited at Jonah by fashion of praise. I don't know. Every fish that have swallowed your career, every fish that have swallowed your health, Every street that has stolen your marital destiny, every feature that has stolen your joy, your business, as you stand up to praise God that day, God will speak to that fish, and that fish will vomit you out in the name of Jesus. Amen. God unleashes wonders through praise. He unleashes wonders through praise. And we saw that in 2 Corinthians 20 22, and say, The Lord lay an ambushment. By fashion of praise, God fought the battles for them. He fought about, he said, God lay an ambushment and their enemies were destroyed. Praise provokes supernatural intervention. For you to be, walk in the supernatural, then you must engage you to weapon. Praise is a spiritual warfare for the deliverance of the righteous. Hallelujah. Praise is a spiritual warfare for the deliverance of the righteous. And one day, we saw in 2 Kings 3, verse 18, he said, Elijah, three Moabs, three kings gang up to fight Israel. Three kings gang up to fight Israel. And they came and they met Elijah. And Elijah said, just bring me. No, not, 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 not there, please. I'm sorry. He said, three kings gang up to fight Elijah. 
And Elijah ordered for a Israel. Elijah ordered for a Israel. And as soon as the Israel came and started playing the music, God came down and Elijah gave them directive on what to do. And their victory was certain. Ah, but Apostle Paul, Apostle Saul, when he did First Samuel 16, from 20 downward, he said, an evil spirit came unto Saul. An evil spirit came to torment Saul. But as soon as David started praising God, as soon as David started praising God, he said the evil spirit will instantly depart from Saul. So praise terminate every cause of the enemy. Satan cannot withstand praise. He cannot withstand praise. He cannot withstand praise. That's why Satan will limit you not to praise God. Satan will always encourage you to murmur and complain. That's why we see more murmurers in the church than praisers. There are more complainers in the church than praisers. You will see a man who will tell you, throughout yesterday I never eat. Somebody will just, as soon as church closed now, he will just tell you, ah, pastor, I was looking for you before. I just saw you. Throughout yesterday I have not eaten. Hmm. And we need the same story for 20 different persons. After one month, he will say again, say, pastor, I have interviewed no more, but now no way to go again. This guy has been telling interview every day. Why? That is the trace of the wicked one. Because he wants to keep you in perpetual stagnation. And that's why when they come resist him, say, I am a product of praise. I carry the glory of God. He said, my glory I will share with no man. And so God, I give you glory. It's worth speaking in Psalm 103. He said, we have, not, we have not made ourselves. It is God that made us to be praised to him. Hallelujah. It is God that made us to be praised to him. I will continue to praise him. I will continue to praise him. Hallelujah. I will continue to praise him. Two. Praise is a spiritual trigger for the supernatural. Praise spiritually triggers of the supernatural. We saw that of Paul and Silas. What praise did for them? What praise did for them? What praise did for them? I don't know why. It's like, you know, the earth is the Lord's first tool. And it's like, as they started praising God, the Lord was started checking the tools. I don't know what to make an earthquake to occur. But tonight, as you start praising God, I see God tapping the earth for you in the name of Jesus. Every air that have withstood your breakthrough, I see God tapping the stove for you in the name of Jesus. As soon as they started praising God, God started tapping the head. God started tapping the head. Suddenly there was an earthquake. Suddenly there was an earthquake. It was a loud praise. He said the prisoners are them. The prisoners are them. It's not just make a, make a praise. They were jumping. They were flying. They were singing. They were shouting for joy. And suddenly there was an earthquake. And he said, the prison door opened at his own accord. God came down. In the case of Peter in Acts chapter 2, he said while they were praying, the angel came and opened. Angel came and opened. Peter saw the angel. <laughs> but in the case of Paul and Silas, God came down on his own. God came down and the prison quaked. Whatever thing that I've been studying before, as we engage the garment of praise, I see that the thing that been broken in the name of Jesus. I see that this has been broken in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I buy blind Bartimaeus. I buy blind Bartimaeus. In Mark 10, from 47 to 48, 46 to 47, he said, as soon as he saw Jesus coming, he engaged the first of praise. He said, thy son of David, thy son of David. You know, those are types of praise singers. Unfortunately, in this part of the world, we don't have praise singers. When you go to Yoruba land, in the king's palace, there's a praise singer. There's a praise singer. When you go to political land in Abuja, you will see praise singers. As they are praising, maybe you don't want to lose money, but they will give you the address of Baba. As they are giving the title, giving you, giving you, giving you, giving you, giving you. You don't know money, you just open the pocket and say, take calm. Take calm. Take calm. They were qualified praise singers. They were qualified praise singers. They were qualified, and that they got this from Blind Bartimaeus. He was so blind that his name was called Blind Bartimaeus. But one day, he had Jesus coming and engaged the force of praise. And he said, That's Jesus, that son of David. You know, no, the Bible said Jesus stands tall. 
Because he gave him his pet name. Praise is giving God his pet name. Praise is magnifying God. Praise is acknowledging his excellency. Praise is acknowledging his superiority over you. And he said, Thy son of David, thy son of David, thy son of David, have mercy. When you praise God because you package your request, answer is guaranteed. Praise God and package your request answer. It's no one inside of prayer. No praise at all. Your prayer from one end is complaining. God, this prayer request was in Shiloh 2015 before. In short, the first Shiloh was there with this same prayer request. Why God has not answered? Because that your prayer request is engloved with complaining. Engage the garment of praise like blind Bartimaeus. He said, Thou son of David, have mercy, have mercy. And that mercy attracted the attention of Jesus. Somebody's story is changing today in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Somebody's story is changing today in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Jesus himself used it. Jesus used this weapon to trigger supernatural intervention. He used it. In John 11, we saw in 39 to 44, Mary herself testifying that Lazarus had been died for four days and he had decomposed. But in 39 of it, he said, Jesus glorifying God. He glorifying God. And he said, Lord, I thank you. As soon as Jesus let us say thank you, because the supernatural precedes the natural. The supernatural precedes the natural. The supernatural precedes the natural. So Jesus just said, I thank you. God, I thank you. And he was thanking God. Lazarus was already awake in the grave before he came out. Lazarus was already sitting for them to, for him to comfort. And Jesus said, Lazarus, oh, you are now comfort. And Lazarus came forth. As he engaged this force of praise, whatever thing that has been dead in your life, your health, your career, I see them being coming forth in the name of Jesus. I see them being coming forth in the name of Jesus. Men, let's engage that work of praise. He said, when praise is a God pleaser. Praise pleases God. And his word says, when the ways of a man please the Lord, he makes his enemy at peace with him. When the ways of God, when the ways of man, Please the Lord. He makes your enemy at peace with you. That was the issue of the Canaan woman. She came to Jesus on her own. And Jesus said, Ah, this bread is not made for people like you. I cannot give the children bread to the strangers. But that did not, uh, she targeted another garment again. She went to another realm and she employed the realm of praise. The Bible said, And she knelt down and worshiped him, glorifying him. She knelt down and started worshiping him. And he said, My glory give unto me the glory due unto me. And she gave God the glory due unto me by praise. Glory is another form of praise. And she started glorifying God. Glorifying God. God said, You are healed. Let your daughter be healed again. I don't know. As you engage that from coming to glorify God, when you praise him, you glorify him. When you praise him, you exalt him. When you praise him, you are saying for distinction. Hallelujah. When you praise him, you are set for distinction. He said, I am redeemed. You are a priest of God. And that's why I fear Malachi 2 from 1 to 3 studio. Malachi 2. He said, if you know late in the heart to praise me. Praiselessness is a sin. He said, if you know late in your heart to praise me, O ye priest. We say priest. We are all redeemed to be priests. According to his word in Revelation 5.10, he said, he has redeemed us our king and priest unto the Lord to reign your head. So, when you say priest, don't think of it. It's only Pastor Abi. We are all priests to God. And he has said, if we don't lay it on earth to praise him, if we don't lay it on earth to praise him, there will be a terrible cause. And that's why I fear. When I read 1 Corinthians 4.7, he said, what do you have that you know this from God? What did you have that you did not receive? First Corinthians 4, 7. He said, for what make it differ from another? And what has that that thou didst not receive? And if not thou receive it, why does that glorify as if thou hast not received anything? It's an abomination not to praise God. What do you have? The life you are living was given to you by God. Money cannot buy life. Ah, I think you see what is happening to Bwari now. Nigeria can pay three loans for Bwari to come back. For Nigeria now for 53 days now, no president. And you are here complaining. Is it money you are talking about? 
Your one is that if I had money, I would have gone to India. If I had money, I would, go, I would have gone to Germany. Ha! Buhari has money to go to the moon. Nigeria has money to go to the moon. But here our president is incapacitated. Lift your voice and praise him again. Exalt his name. Give him glory. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. In your language, thank him. Exalt his name. Glorify his name. Thank him. Thank him. Give him glory. Thank him. Thank him. Exalt his name. Give him glory. Magnify his name. Tell him what he cannot do for himself. God cannot praise for himself. Lord, I thank you. We give you glory. We magnify your name. We magnify your name. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. I've just seen some people, they'll say, ah, I am so healthy because I'm on proper dieting. They said they are so healthy because they are on proper dieting. Say, my meal, ah, me, the rice I eat is this selected one. I don't eat this common rice. A day will come, that, one, that thing will fail you. Praise provokes supernatural favor. We saw that in the life of Esther. When he did Esther chapter 5, verse 1. He said, and Esther appeared before the king with her royal apparel. Esther appeared before the king with her royal apparel and stood at the inner court of the king. Enter my gates with thanksgiving and my court with praise. Psalm 104. He said, enter my gates with thanksgiving and my court with praise. Praise is your access to God's throne. And Esther assessed that throne with her royal apparel. And what happened? Esther got the attention of the king instantly. Because anywhere there is praise, favor is being provoked. Anywhere there is praise, favor is being provoked. Even though she's an unbeliever, the daughter of Herodias, she's an unbeliever, but then she appeared before the king one day and danced a terrible dance. She danced a dance that the king was mesmerized. Somebody will dance a dance that will mesmerize God tonight in the name of Jesus. Somebody will dance tonight. He's was speaking in 2 Samuel 6. He said, David danced with all his mind. When David took the ark of God to Jerusalem, he said, David danced with all his mind. David was a God pleaser. There was no way God would not disagree with David. He said, David danced. He said, early in the morning will I praise thee. David. Praise was David's lifestyle. Until praise becomes your lifestyle, you will not be distinguished. And that's why it's worth speaking. In Daniel 11, he said, Those that know their God will make exploits. Praise is one secret to make exploits. He said, Those that know their God will make exploits. Praise is one major secret to make exploits. And a religious daughter started dancing. And she started dancing. I started dancing. I started dancing. Because God cannot praise this irresistible. The king, before the king know, unknowingly, because praise mesmerize you. And she's, the king said to her, Ah, acts of anything. Acts of anything. Praise is what I gave you a blanket check to fill your name. The king told her, said, Look, acts of anything I will give to you. Acts of anything. Acts of anything. When she asked for the head of John the Baptist, the king was not willing to surrender John, but he has made a promise. He said, ask of anything. When you praise God, you step into the realm of blank check. God will give you the check, sign it and give it to you, say, fill your request. I remember of us were very happy. You go and see the governor of River State and he gives you a blank check. Say, look, fill any amount. Fill any amount. The equal number will fill 5,000. Because some people, their mentality is not more than 5,000. Some people's mentality is 1,000. Let's, let's thank him. We give you glory. We we'll magnify your name again. Thank you, Jesus. But who can praise God? Who can praise God? In John 9, 3. God does not hear everyone. John 9, 3 is God does not hear everyone. He said, neither at this man's sin, nor his man, but at the works of God should live. 9, 3. Please, I'm sorry, maybe I got this one wrong. But, God does not hear 
the prayer of sinners. The only people that are qualified to praise God is are his children. Hallelujah. You can only be qualified to praise God when you are the child of God. You are only qualified to praise God when you are the child of God. Please, I want you to join this camp of praise. I want you to join this life of praise. When we see our father in faith, it's an embodiment of praise. When you see Bishop Yedipo, it's an embodiment of praise. The faith tabernacle you saw, you see, is coming out of praise. Even the faith theater is coming out of praise. And that's why we need to embody and glow that for praise. And if you know you don't have any link with him, the only access you have to operate in the supernatural is to surrender your life to God. He said, as many that believe in his name, to them he has given power to become the sons of God. If you know you don't have any relationship with him, begin to stand on our, stand your feet and begin to... Hallelujah. If you know you don't have any relationship with him, please, you are the one I'm talking about. It's another opportunity again. Today is a different day. Because after now, we are engaging the force of praise. And I see the supernatural happening here in the name of Jesus. Praise his word and make it to dear the undeniable. Praise and make it to defeat the undefeatable. Praise gives you a supernatural breakthrough. And so if you don't have a relationship with him, please, may you stand on your feet. You are the one I'm talking about. If you know you don't have a relationship with him, he will never hear the voice of the stranger. He will never hear the voice of the stranger. He will never hear the voice of the stranger. May we stand on our feet. May all of us stand on our feet, please. May we stand on our feet. As we shout a big joy for Jesus, clap your hand, jump, and I praise as we welcome our senior pastor. <laughs> Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Are you ready for signs and wonder tonight? Yeah. It's coming your way. Yeah. Give Jesus a big clap of offering as you take your seat and prepare for the communion. I'm sure you enjoyed that powerful message. Come on, give Jesus a big hand of praise. You must know that what God desires most is our praise. The greatest miracle he did came via praise. You remember Paul and Silas in the prison when all hope were lost, when they pray and then they switch to praise. And the Bible said there was an earthquake. That was what? So when you want anything to be reversed, when the enemy says to you, God cannot help you. There's nothing you can do. Switch to praise. Switch to what? And God will reverse the irreversible. Glory to God. At the altar of praise, every irreversible is reversed. Some time ago, I was in a siege. Right and left, front and back, everywhere was closed. There was no one who could come to us. Everybody stayed clear of us, my family. I didn't know what else to pray about. Then I remember, if you don't know what else to do, praise is the next thing to do. So I told everybody, including my wife, I said, I don't know what else to do, but let's begin to give God thanks. And one day, listen to this testimony, and one day, God gave me a word. You see, anytime God visits, he visits you by a word in your heart. God gave me a word in 2 Timothy. He said, listen, they will proceed no further. I can never forget. When God speaks, you can't forget it. He said, they will proceed no further. As it happened to, Jam, to, to, to James and Jambri that withstood Moses, their own sin will be manifest to all the people. I told my wife. And when I got to service that day, Bishop Abeo was preaching. And as if I wasn't sitting among the pastor anyway, and he pointed to my direction. He said, all the gang up against you today are smashed. I said, I knew it was settled. 
And that was how the case was destroyed. Glory to God. That was how that case was reversed in my favor. You are here in this service tonight. Let me say this to you as the Lord God of this commission living. Whatever has been against you till today, today being the last service in the month of June, everything since January that has been against you shall be reversed for your favor. When you come to a close end, look up to God in praise. So, I me, mean, Paul did it with Silas. There was an earthquake. The Bible said the prison house was shaking to the foundation. Root. You see, when God wants to settle a case, he allowed the enemy to finish. Then God would dig them to their root and then overturn and approve them. Every case against you shall be completely overturned. I say, hear me, it shall be overhauled and overturn your favor. In the name of Jesus Christ. But know this, we thank God not only for what he has done, we thank God ahead. It is natural to thank God for what you see, but it is supernatural, that's faith, to thank God for what you have not seen. Look ahead. God told the children of Israel, you want Jericho war to come down. Then go ahead and be thanking me ahead. Go ahead and thank me ahead. God always wants us to thank him ahead. That is faith. Go ahead. When one of the ten lepers look and check, he went back. Thanking God ahead. Glory to Jesus. So thank God for your healing that has started. Thank God for the application letter you have written. Somebody said, right, thank God ahead for the employment. Thank God for somebody who called you there is a job somewhere. Keep thanking God ahead. Thank God for the interview they call you for. In fact, thank God that you're a candidate to look for a job. Thank God every day. Look at Hebrew chapter 13 and verse 15 as I close. Hebrew 13, 15. He said, by him therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise unto God continually. How long? Only in the morning, in the afternoon, in the night, for one week, for two months, for one year, for how long? Continually that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Now look at the, how it started, by him. That is by Jesus Christ. By Jesus Christ. Therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise. To God continually. Now, some of us have gotten so. Even though you didn't see them on Sunday, thank God you spoke to them. Thank God God gave you a turn to speak. Thank God for them because he, he sent you. He has ordained you. And you see, he ordained you and made you to go to them. Now, one thing you can preach to people, you cannot prick their heart. So you thank God you are able to Preach to them. Lord, I thank you. You are pricking their heart to come. Lord, I didn't see them this Sunday. They are coming next Sunday. Oh, they are coming for Thanksgiving this Sunday. My souls are coming for Covenant Family Day this Sunday. Lord, I thank you. I'm too sure they will appear. Ah, you are moving God. You are, God will look at all the souls you have written. Oh, Sister Clarus souls. In the market, go and see them. In the vision of night, they will see you. In the dream of night, there will be still living in your room. Olumeni. Don't say, I'm tired. I don't talk to them. No. Give God thanks. You have invited them. You can't bring them. Glory to God. Even if you bring your car, you can't force them to enter. So, give me thanks over them. Lord, I thank you. Who am I? For making me a candidate, a privilege to preach your gospel. Ah, Lord, thank you. You are stealing the heart of God. Not that this people they're not go here, Lord. You don't see them. This one they're not go here. No, you give God thanks and you seal that you are winning their souls. Glory to God. I said glory to God. In Matthew chapter twenty-one, look at verse ten. When Jesus came to Jerusalem, the Bible said the whole city was moved. Hi, Matthew twenty-one verse ten. The whole city, and when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved. Say, who is this? They say, Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth. The whole city was moved. 
every bad thing will move out of way for you. Yeah. Every failure and sickness will move out of way for you. Yeah. You see, when you offer God praise, everything move for your favor. Whatever refuse to move, God will move them out of the way. Yeah. Everything move for your favor when you give God praise. And whatever is not good, whatever is discomforting you, whatever is diseasing your comfort, failure, lack of job, God will move them out of the way. Yeah. Mark it, those are the things that happen in praise. Those are the things that happens in praise. You want to go for an interview, thank God. When you are singing and praising him, joy begins to lighten. Listen to me. There's a natural beauty, there's a supernatural beauty. The people who are seeing you, they are seeing the supernatural beauty because when you praise God, God comes down. And then you rub your mind with the immortal mind of God. You see, it's like a woman rubbing powder. You are rubbing the mortality of God in your face. Sometimes they just see you. They just ask, what's your name? Clarus, Joseph. Oh yeah, go, we call you. They have seen the, the supernatural beauty. But when you go with natural beauty, you can, your face will be frowned. You can't see yourself. So they look at you, they say, this one, uh, we, can't, we, can't, we can't employ this woman. You will bring problems to our company. They say, this man, you are too tall, self. We don't want tall man. Every, Satan will just bring all manner. But when you praise God, you carry God's presence. Every hindrance in that interview, every hindrance to that examination, God moved them out of the way. Glory to God.